Okay, so in today's math lesson, we're dividing more with these fractions, uh, except this time, now we're getting a little more complicated. We're going to start dividing using unlike denominators. We'll notice that in the first problem here, we have like denominators. In other words, the two nines um, are the denominators, and they are the same. So what we found out the other day or yesterday is that we could just, if the denominators are the same, we can simply take our numerators and divide them. So this becomes sort of an 8 divided by 4 situation. 8 divided by 4 gives me 2. Now the reason why this works is because, well, the question is really asking how many 4 ninths fit in 8 ninths? So here's my little part A here. So if I have 8 ninths, let me draw that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 9 pieces right there, and I need 8 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are my 8 ninths, and now I'm looking for groups of 4 ninths. How many groups of 4 ninths exist in 8 ninths? Well, if all of these guys are a ninth, right, every one of these guys, there's a ninth, there's a ninth, they're all ninths, and I have 8 of them, but I want to make groups of 4 ninths, I notice that 1, 2, 3, 4, there's a group of 4 ninths. So there's an entire group right there. And I have one, two, three, four. I have another entire group of four ninths. There's another group right there. So my answer is two. I have two groups of four ninths that total eight ninths. Okay, so it worked there. At the beginning, it worked over here. Now, as far as an algorithm is concerned, let me take my eight ninths divided by my four ninths. And I know that is the same as taking my 4 ninths and multiplying it by 8 ninths. And I can simplify right there. And I still wind up with 8 over 4. And I wind up with 2. Okay, so there's a third way to solve that particular problem. So like I said, that's the deal when you're working with like denominators. But let's take another one over here, this guy number 3. Notice that the denominators are not the same. I have a 5 here and a 3 over here. Well, what I want to do, it's kind of tricky, a little sneaky. Um, I want to trick the world, I suppose, and I'm going to create new a new problem. Except this time, I'm going to make the denominators the same. So I'm going to make an equivalent problem, except the denominators will be the same. So if I have a 5 and a 3, I have a common denominator of 15. And my new numerator here, this is a times 3 situation over here. So this is a 9, and this is a times 5 situation over here. Makes this a 5. If you're a little confused about um, finding equivalent fractions, you can always build a chart. We can build a little chart over here. And one next to it on this side. Okay, so we have 3 fifths over here, and we have our 1 third over here. And I can start building. I can say, let's see, this becomes a 10, there's a 15, there's a 20, here's a 6, a 9, a 12. And I can do the same thing here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 6, 9, 12. Let me go a little more. 5 and 15. I notice I have a match right there with my denominators. There they are. So here's my 9 15 there and my 5 15 over here. And I'm pretty well good to go, because now that I have my denominators as the same, I can simply divide by 9, divided by 5, and that's going to go one time, or two time, one time, with 4 left. There it is. Or I can now run my other scenarios here. So I have a 15 over 5 times 9 over 15. Notice this situation over here. Circle that out. These can reduce. And I wind up with 9 over 5 again. Again, being 1 and 4 fifths. And if I wanted to draw that out, I'm starting with 9 fifteenths. And let's see if I can actually get this to fit in here. Zoom. zoom. And so I have 9 fifteenths. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I need 9 of them. 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are my 9 fifteenths. Let me just double check that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There they are, and I'm making groups of 5 fifteenths. 
So one, two, three, four, five. There's one group. There it is. There's one group. And I can't quite make another one. If I did, I should have five, right? So one, two, three, four, five. Can't quite make another one, but I do have four of them. So there's my four fifths right there. And I put them together, and I have one and four fifths, okay? And all of my answers match, which is really nice. So I proved this thing, this problem, three different ways, and I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, so I guess the rule of thumb is if you can make yourself those nice little common denominators, you're feeling pretty good, and, you're, and the problem becomes a little more simple. All right? Thanks so much, folks. Take care. Bye-bye.